guys, um, today we have a conversation with Yanis. I'm not gonna say your surname because every time I make a mess out of it. And Yanis, you got the name right. It is already good enough, Kevin. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, 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 we just came from uh, Greece. We were in uh, the second city. Was was the name? You, you've been there last time we were talking. Which the Thessaloniki you mean? Thessaloniki. Thessaloniki. Excellent. Yes, yes. Um, so and there was a guy, Yanis. So uh, yeah. And it was there is an abundance of Yanis. Yes. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Yanis, what is it that you do? Yes. First and foremost, uh, thanks very much for the invitation, Kevin. It is a pleasure to be discussing with you on such interesting issues. Yes. As regards myself, my name is uh, Ioannis Revolidis and I am a lecturer at the University of Malta. I am appointed both at the Center for Distributed Ledger Technologies, where I work together <laughs> with Professor Elu on Joshua, all yeah. things related to blockchain and distributed ledger technologies. Uh, Joshua, Professor Elu, that is, he's responsible for the technology side. My main responsibility is the law and regulation of blockchain and other DLT. Nice. Yeah. And I'm, at the same time, I'm also appointed at the Department of Media, Communications and Technology Law, the law faculty of the University of Malta, where I also conduct re research on other emerging technologies and their legal regulation. That is a field of law where I have been working for the past uh, 12 years. When you say now, other, other emerging technologies? Yes. Well, everything from cloud computing All to right. the Internet of Things or artificial intelligence. I would say that everything digital that surrounds us yes. more or less falls within our research interests. I'm not alone in this department. It would have been a Herculean task to do all that alone or so. You can't be I'm alone. working <laughs> closely with Dr. Mireille Caruana at the law faculty, with whom I share uh, the regulation of emerging technologies. Nice. Maybe we'll do a podcast with her as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. I think, I think she would be happy. Yeah. So, okay. Um, Cloud computing, AI, Internet of Things. Let's touch a bit on that. But then later I would like to go on what we what we usually discuss, because of course I know you from, from the Crypto Hub Malta. Um, fantastic yes. place to connect with fantastic people. Because um, then we're, I, I'd like to go a bit on the IP and the law side of things. Yes. But when we say Internet of Things, because... Uh, of course, I know what it is, Internet of Things, to a certain extent. I don't know the, the technicalities of it completely, but I understand Me the neither, concept. don't worry. Me neither. Yeah, I, th I think in reality, we're, we're in a space where even the most advanced people in, in, in the topics and in the subject, you still, you only know 5-10% of what you know today. Yes. And yes. It, was always, it, it is always like that, no? Yeah, I think I think that uh, having the ambition to technically understand these technologies might be a little bit um, uh, irrational. I would say I, I, the best way to describe that would be that for those that are enthusiasts or interested in these technologies, uh, I, I think that the best parallel would be uh, cars, automobiles. There are many people that like automobiles and cars but they yeah. don't know how the internal combustion engine works. Of course, yes. Nonetheless, they are fully aware of the social and economics pros and cons, cons of the yes. technology. Yeah. I think that this is something similar. Yeah. Uh, of course, it helps immensely if somebody understands what is going on under the hood. Yeah. But it is not absolutely necessary in the sense that these are technologies that shape our social and economic life. Yes. And as long as we are able to follow that, I think that we are well within the game. Yeah, and with that comes the moral values and the ethic aspect of, course, of things. Of course, of course, because what I usually say to my students at the university is that we must always keep in mind that there is a two-way communication between emerging technologies and our society. Yes. And the two-way means that I, I know that people perceive digital technologies as shaping our society. 
But the reality is that digital technologies are also being shaped by our by society. Us. Yes, worldwide. yes, yes. Therefore, therefore, yes. Uh, we must always remember this two-way communication between the two. Because That's at the end of the day, technologies are tools, tools that yes. we utilize in order to achieve social and economic goals. Yes. Therefore, I think that we must be careful when we talk about their autonomy or talking about them as something separate. From uh, exactly. Our yes. That this is. One 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 uh, one major aspect of why I'm doing this is exactly this, you know, because it, it's like somehow we 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 always look at things as external from us, separate from us, and I mean even in relationships, you know, it, 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 it's like uh, it, it's blame. So so, but that gives me the excuse to blame that since it's separate from me and it's something else from me. When the shit hits the fan, I blame the I blame the thing, yeah. you know. When in reality, yeah. when in reality of facts, from the starting point, there is no such thing as it's completely separate from me because yeah. I'm shaping it as much as she's shaping me, you know. It I is. always refer yeah. refer to AI as she and technology, you know. It's like for me, it has a I female see. it has a female quality. I don't know why. Okay. <laughs> so that's that's one of the main 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 aspects that. I would like to come to, to that the podcast through the through the conversations and the various people that come in. Um, we we venture a bit more into into that. Topic. That's fantastic, Kevin, because uh, one of the key issues uh, working in this area for the past twelve years is that, unfortunately, sometimes it it, it gets mixed up with science fiction and yeah, so, yes. all, all kinds of misconceptions. Yes. Uh, I mean, we have been talking about AI, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I know that artificial intelligence is a technology that really captivates and fascinates people. Yes. But but the reality is that uh, we're not really close to building intelligent robots. The Terminator or David from the <laughs> are not around the corner. Right? At least 1,000 right. years from now. <laughs> yes, yes. But uh, uh, that is a pity because You know, when people associate this technology yes. with this kind of phenomena, not they... to say, not to say, if I may pause you a bit, not to say that I'm 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 fascinated, and 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 I love dreaming about the science fiction and those kind of things. On the topic of science fiction, um, I don't know your. I would like to get your perspective on this. I know you're pragmatic and from law, and and so so it's very very um, uh, s structured thinking. Um, but sometimes I look at things, like even the science fiction, like watching all those movies in the 80s, 90s, 2000s. You know, those those movies, though, that that fantasy, that imagination captured into an expression. It fed us with with seeds, with 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 a line of thinking that we can go into AI. Okay, we're 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 the timeline is not spread enough to get a, a proper measurement. But in 1,000 years, in 500 years, and in, in 200 years, yes, if you go there and you look back, I I would allow myself to say, okay, we can trace where all this started from. You know, it's the imagination, the expression, the movies, the comics, the all, 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 all expression. No, I understand that. Let us say that um, there is probably an internal human need. Yes, to yes, and that, express, yes. Uh, yes. ambitions and yes, yes. and uh, to, to think of of a future that might entail different possibilities. Yes. yes. Absolutely, I don't want to downplay this. Yes. But as you said, because I come from law, I yeah. am, you know, designed to think about uh, what what are the actual problems that we are facing at the moment. And and I really find it important that we are honest towards the general public. Yes. That we do not overhype phenomena that are not there yet. I mean, exactly. Of course, of course, we can always discuss. Yes. Yeah. I mean, but but but. Um, When it comes to introducing people to such technologies, one key parameter, for example, is that no matter how fascinated we are, we always need to keep in mind, is artificial intelligence the solution to the problems that we have in mind? Because, you know, sometimes there is this tendency where people 
get so much fascinated with the technology where they think that it's the solution to all their problems. But it is only rarely yes. the case yes, that this yes, is not yes, so. Yes, yes. And and I, I say that because I have noticed that sometimes we lose a lot of time and other resources uh, involving ourselves in, in some kind of uh, endeavor that, that might have been misled. Of course, we learn by mistakes, right? Don't get me sure. wrong. Right? So sure. I also sure. understand that this is a process. But I think that over the past 20 years, we have become as a society a little bit more experienced with emerging technologies. Yeah. And it is good to learn the lesson. I mean, yeah. if you look if you look at the predictions about the internet 20 years ago, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Many of the things did not materialize. We, yeah. we don't have the internet that people pictured 20 years ago. But yeah. some of them survived. But some of them are, are there. Yeah. But some of them survived. Yeah. Which, which, which shows that uh, we need to be both uh, captivated and cautious, probably. Yeah, I think it's it's a fine fine tuning into that balance where where you 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 know there's this fantasy and there's this hype and it's and it's okay to explore it because it's fun in a way and and it expands your way of thinking as well, um, while being grounded in what actually is happening at the moment and what is the facts and the possibilities that are reachable at the moment and what we can do because. I think there's there's a bit of a there's a bit of a danger zone where where we're too much in hype. Then then there's the fear of the AI is gonna consume us, and it's like it's inevitable because if, what, you, first and foremost we're 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 still very uh, in my in my humble opinion we're very much Neanderthal thinking, you know it's like yeah. fear based. When I say that, it's, it for me is fear-based thinking. So someone yes. is someone is there to steal from me. Someone is there for, to 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 fuck me up. Someone is going yes. to take something from me, and it happens. It's there. I'm not saying it's not there. <laughs> you know, I can I can vouch for that. Yes. Um, but when we venture into these 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 hype things, automatically then we escalate even that fear. Yes. And we yes. start and and then we then then I see that we we start designing things unrealistically kind of thing so I, yes. I, th this is why i like to talk with you every time yeah no we we perpetuate misconceptions sometimes. exactly you know uh, so so we don't see the reality of x for what it is yes. plain and simple yes. yes and i want i want to make one thing clear yeah nothing is inevitable in, yes. in, in the way that the society will develop there is no inevitability i think what i have learned especially from law yeah. is that the forces that move social and technological progress are completely random. We, yeah. My field of law, yeah. which is information technology law, suffers from the eternal randomness of technological yeah. progress. Yeah. And which, which means that we're going to be busy for quite some time, for sure. Yes. Right? Yes. And I'm happy to, to be busy. But, but I, really, I really don't believe in technological inevitabilities. To give you an example, Ten years ago, everybody was talking about the Google Glasses. Yes. Everybody. It was inevitable. It was everybody believed that we will go around wearing glasses that will scan other people or whatever, yeah, scan yeah. products, or yeah. uh, they they will tell us how to lead our lives. Yeah. Not only didn't happen, is it, it is one of the most famous flops yeah. of technology world. Right. This is. I, I just use that as an example in order to say that. You know, sometimes I think these discussions of inevitability come from certain investment centers which they want to hide the one or the other product for their own purposes, which is yes. which is to a certain extent understandable. Understandable to a certain extent. Maybe exactly. the, to do but it is understandable. Take, when we hear about technology news, I think we should take them with a pinch of salt yeah. and, and just wait and see. Because uh, at the end of the day, at this stage, yeah. uh, we might think we understand what will happen in the future, but, but we don't really. I mean, again, yeah. because because this period, for example, if I if I turn my attention to the blockchain space, yeah, right, I think that the blockchain space currently experiences a moment that is similar to the dot com crash of the two thousands. To, uh, right right to what the dot com crash oh, of right. the two thousands, right? Yes. Um, and that happens usually whenever we have a very quick over expansion of, of a technology. Yes. Right. 
And why do I mention this example? Yeah. I mention this example because it is not, and, and that has to do also with the attitudes that many people in the space have right now. It is not about the projects that will fail. No. It is about what ideas and core principles will survive yeah. after the crash. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the dot-com crash of the 2000s, there were all kinds of, of companies again involved yes, in the space. Yes. Yeah. They crashed. Yeah. But out of this, we we came to the internet that we know today. Yeah. Right? We we came to the internet of the search engine, of of the content platform. The and the social platform, media yeah, platform. The social these were ideas yeah. that survived. At this stage, I'm not saying whether these are good or bad ideas. I have my, I have my objections, especially. Yes, but that's always. Oh, I mean, there's, there will always. I, I mean, there's, there's. The, fundamentally, there is no such thing which is hundred percent good or hundred percent bad. I mean, exactly. there's, there, there is always. A, it's, it's like a dance. It's like a painting. No, I'm, yes. That's how I, I'm, I'm, I'm an artist. I, I paint so. That's how I see things and, and evaluate things. Um, yes. So it, it's it, there's nothing inherently bad or or completely completely good. Yes, you know. Of course. And and touching on this on this topic, that that model, even on a business model, like for instance, at the moment we're 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 working on a on an AI platform for a certain um, services, you know. And this meet this yes. morning had we had a meeting. We're coming to the base model. And the first thing that, that we want to do is stress test it. So for me, the blockchain is going through that stress test phase. Yes. With the blockchain, of course, and with and, and it's not it's not even the blockchain, like any emerging market. First guys that are going in are the opportunists, that the guys that are going for just to yes. make a quick bug. And it's okay because they are stress testing it. You know? Yes. The guys yes. that the guys that follow through the stress test Test testing, stress yes. testing, and yes. 20 years later, 30 years later, 50 years later, they're still functioning and growing. Are the guys that are in it for to fulfill a need that, that they have yes. a higher purpose, a, a bigger purpose? Yes. That's the way yes. I see things. No, no, I agree. I fully agree. This is why you see me so cautious of making any predictions. Yes, or, yes, yes, yes. Or yes. believing <laughs> in inevitability. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, because, because of course. Uh, contrary to the doom that many people predict, uh, I, I will make a prediction. I, yeah. I will take the risk. Take the I'll risk. Say yeah. that, <laughs> I'll say that the technology will survive. Yes. We just don't know yet. We just don't know yet which use cases and which part exactly. of the technology yes. will survive. Yes. We will yeah. see. We will we'll be see. here to monitor. Yeah. You know? And, and I make this prediction not because I look into the future, but because I look into the past. Yeah. Yeah. Because we have seen this happening before. Over and, and over again. In fact, in fact, we have seen this happening as early as the 16th century. Yeah. It is not It is not the first time that we see uh, a technology or a sector being overexpanded quickly yeah. and then and then experiencing a dramatic collapse. Yeah. Right? And, and it is relatively dramatic right now in the blockchain. It is relatively dramatic. We are coming into... into uh, we're experiencing the collapse of companies that were thought once to be unbreakable. Unbreakable, right? yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. want to mention any names. Not no, no, it, it, doesn't it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Right? For, I don't think. I don't think. That the, have invested there, but yeah, I don't think the the purpose of this podcast is is to shed some. I I I believe there's the, the, for this kind of information there's already enough, <laughs> like way okay. more than enough. <laughs> you know, everyone exposing this and exposing that, and it's yeah. like I'm the, I I I'm, I'm more into the fundamental things. So the, if there's something to be seen and changed, we can see it in a for me in a more neutral grounded way yes you know yes and since you 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 look for fundamentals i think that from all these incidents that we have experienced in 2022 yeah which has been a very tumultuous year i think that yes. one one conclusion in my mind has become clear that uh, technological progress should be responsible and responsibility comes unfortunately with regulation you might call me biased no, because no, that's no, what no, i yeah. do yes, yes but yes. but i think that 
Yeah. I think it's becoming all the more clearer. It's clear, man. As, it's, 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 it's as clear as daylight. I mean, since since the first time I met you, I was all about decentralized and no regulations. Fuck this rebel pirate, you know, like blah, 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 all these, you know. But you, you mentioned something that day and it, it meant like when 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 someone loses 50k, whether it's on blockchain or on whatever a decentralized system, who's gonna call Ghostbusters? You know, it, it's like you're going to go for a centralized system to, to help you. So and and through the conversations with you and, and, and Joshua, it's like, again, there's no such thing as let's go completely decentralized or completely centralized. And I think this is a fundamental that we're all looking into. I mean, and it's not just on the blockchain. It, this, this model can be applied for, for, for various social structures and, Absolutely. and, and Absolutely. thinking. Again, let's again, get the best of both and, and yes. fine tune, you know? And yes, that can yes, only happen good. for me with with proper information, not biased decision making from an emotional or, or financial. It's like, let's let's get to the fundamental, the, ba the basic structures yes. and take yes. decisions from there. And yes. then we play. After that, we play. Yes. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and I think these are safe conclusions that, we, again, we have drawn from past experiences. Yes, exactly. Uh, I think we should not underestimate our past experiences when it comes to regulating emerging technologies. That's that's another aspect that I sometimes find interesting. Every time we have a new emerging technology, people always claim that this time is different. Uh, <laughs> this technology is different. Yes. <laughs> well, you know, I, I understand, of course, that, that there are differences, of course. We are making, of course, certain leaps technologically. Yes. But, yes. but at, at the fundamental level, as it's, it's you have same. described it, yeah. I think that we see the same patterns repeat oh. themselves again and again. Yes. There is... There is an early phase of enthusiasm yes. and the technology will break down our existing institutions and and then we kind of realize that our existing institutions were not that bad after all. After all. Because, because, you know, these are institutions that we have developed over thousands of oh, years, yes. yep. coexisting with one another. And yep. at the end of the day, to defend a little bit my discipline, it represents the average common sense yes. law. And this is why I tell my students that they, they should be happy that they study law because it's easy. Yeah. Uh, especially in comparison to astrophysics or other disciplines <laughs> that are or space, or space yes. or space yes. traveling. <laughs> yes, because the law represents the average common sense. Yeah. The painful average common sense that we have obtained after centuries of doing mistakes. Yeah. And and you know what what i find fascinating in human nature is that human nature always behaves uh as as a, as a child as never a learns from as past a what? as a child All it right. never learns from past mistakes it has a tendency to repeat them yes man yes yes i'm 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 uh, on this on this for me i have uh i have an inherent it's inside it's like when i see monuments of of re, re, to remember the war of 1942 or so many warriors have died in the crusaders of and and i that for me it 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 kind of guarantees me that we didn't learn the lesson because when you learn the lesson you don't need to fucking you know it, it's like mm -hmm. It, like Indeed. war, like if 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 we Indeed. keep if we gotta keep honoring, all right, it's a memory. But have we learned from? It's not a matter of making a monument about it. It's a matter of learning the lesson and slightly make it better or Indeed. different. Indeed, and, and you have put it excellently in in the big scale of things. In the big scale of things. In the big scale of things, and and to invest on what you just mentioned. I'm going to tell you that even in the smaller scale, we do the same. I mean, I mentioned the, the 16th century, yeah. right? Yeah. There is, right now, in my mind, there is an impressive parallel between what happened in the 16th century and what happens right now in the blockchain space. Okay. And that's the following. Remind me, for, 16th, for, 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 because I'm not so familiar with what happened in the 16th century. I, I will most explain. Probably a lot of people. Yeah. I, I will explain. I will elaborate. Please. Yes. In, in the 16th century, we have a period of, of history where people experiment a lot with early forms of private companies. 
Okay. And, and the, the, the exchange of capital and the creation of investment products. Okay. And that is for various reasons. In fact, it is not a coincidence that this is happening in the United Kingdom, which, which has been traditionally, uh, I, I would say, the, the Western country with the most experiment, experimentative nature in such things. Well, what happens at this stage is that uh, the king allows the creation of all kinds of companies that promise that they will create products that will completely change the world as we know. Okay. And you're going to say, okay, that is that is not so dramatic. But the dramatic part is that these companies, <laughs> these companies, were allowed to bring their own money Aye. for yeah. their own tokens. Yeah, in right. fact, if you, be, if you wanted to be part of the project, the best way was to buy their tokens or their yes. money. Yeah. The problem is exactly like it's happening yes, right now. No, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right is that these companies at the end of the day, they didn't have any real product behind that. Exactly. Or, or they were misusing their funds. Yes. Yes. Which means that they started creating doubts within their investor circles of course. about their credibility. And you know what happens when there is doubt in the market. We have yes. the so-called well, like... bank run. Yeah. Everybody yeah. starts selling now the private money of a company yeah. or of a crypto project. Yes, in yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. And we have and we have this phenomenon whereby then the project will collapse because yes. these projects mostly depend on the trust that they gain from their investors. Yeah. And, but and you know you can hide reality for a period of time and you can feel that you are clever by hiding the reality. But uh, but at the end of the day, it will come up. <laughs> yes. No people will yes. notice. Yes. And 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 you know it is impressive because. <laughs> This, this this phenomenon of allowing companies to print private money has been there before. Yeah, It's not the first time. Of course, blockchain does that at a different level and scale. Yes, but the principle is the, the same. The principle is the same. Oh, the, principle right? is the, same. the best example I can use here is the, is, is the Terra Luna collapse. Exactly. Terra Luna is a classic example of, yes. of exactly what happened in the 16th century, in the 17th century. Yeah, It's, it's exactly the same thing. Right? And, and I think I think Terra Luna is a very characteristic example because it, it represents a fundamentally bad idea, which is yes, algorithmic yes, yes. stable coins, yes. an idea that has been challenged scientifically many times, right? And hyped it to a level that presented it as indestructible. Right? Well, sorry, but you know, it, it took a lot of wasteful thinking to believe yes, yes, that yes, an algorithmic yes, yes. stable coin will be able to beat reality. It didn't. The, and, and it did it in reality. With, with dramatic results. Yes. And, and yes. because I'm in the law side, you know, I I personally, uh, to be honest, worry most about the small investors. I, I don't, I do, I'm not so much concerned about the big venture capitalists because at the end of the day, they are experienced in what they are doing. They are experienced I, and they can take the, they, the, they can take the punch. Exactly. Yeah. But in, in such incidents, it's not, these guys that lose money, no. no it no, is no, no. people like you and me. Yes. People that have been thrown in an area that they don't understand. Unfortunately, yes. And that's yes. that's where I that's where like like the last few months I I really had to go back into my back to my drawing board and reassess a bit what what are my beliefs and what is my my um my direction with blockchain and and mm -hmm. and, and crypto mm -hmm. and NFTs, like even the project at the moment, I paused it from from promoting and launching and and and, um, and concentrating more on making it more stable, more basic, yeah. more 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 accessible for people, even without crypto, you know, yes. because that's that's a fundamental thing that yes. we're we're always. And, and I can only encourage you, by the way, it is a very beautiful project. Yes. Uh, just just to share an anecdotal story when i was talking about nfts yes in the conference in cyprus last month okay i was telling the people how much of an active community we have in malta yes and, and yes. how you the community of malta are taking the concept of nfts in all kinds of interesting directions yeah and i i used your work as an example to my yes. colleagues to the legal uh, colleagues. My... And they were seriously yours yeah, yeah. your work Thanks, man. They were seriously impressed <laughs> by the artwork, the idea, and the concept. Yes, 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 yes. And that's why that's that that's why if 
Because I think as, as a human being, you get into these spaces with, without even knowing or without even wanting to. Yeah, so yes. so on, on one hand, there's the, the fundamental need of providing, bringing, being successful, revenue and all these kind yes. of things. Yeah. Yes. On the other side, you have uh, a purpose, you have a project, you have an idea and you seriously believe. But then there's a there's 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 this dance between again, you know, it's like when to push and when to pull. Yes. Know? And if I yes. get when when I get when I get into the pushing and I and I start chasing the carrot and forgetting about everything else, that's where I get scammed 1,500 euros. That's where yes. I uh, buy a bot that in the promise that will give me one eat per 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 week and I blow 900 yes. euros, you know, yes. or uh, I make a decision to sign in uh, 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 my MetaMask into something, bam, they get into my wallet and they take my best fucking NFTs, you know, but, yes. but I, but, but then I take the lesson. Yes. That's, that's, that's where, where I think the most important thing I would like, I would prefer not to go through that. Yeah. But now that I went through it, what's the lesson here? You know, yes. so. Yes. I, I, I need to be focused on facts and grounded in reality of today and not in my wishful thinking and the, 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 the hype of stuff. Yes. You know? Because yes. that's where yes. I start making misjudgment and I put myself into shit. So I yes. can't even blame the scammer because the scammer is doing what a scammer does. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's very, it's very simple, yes. you know. So I went into it. Why? Because I was chasing... A, 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 a cloud yes 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 and, and again to use your example uh kevin i would say that in, in your case you do have a vision uh yes. you do dream of something yes but 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 you cannot at the same time be cautious in the way that you will pursue it yeah i, I mean i mean I, I just just to clarify the message here the message is not to pursue your dreams and ambitions of course, it's to just it. to do yes. that in a rational yes. manner. And yeah, grounded. Yeah, as like, rational yes, as possible. As possible. Yes. And yes. we will do mistakes anyhow. Yes. It's, there's no such thing as not doing mistakes. It's like if you have to stop doing stuff in order not to make a mistake, which yes. by itself it's already a mistake. It's a yes. it's a paradox, you know. Yes. <laughs> no, no, so, really. Yeah. I'm telling you. When I presented your work, my colleagues were seriously impressed. I'm honored, man. Thanks. Thanks. But the, the way you combine the uh, the word descriptions with the visual work and yeah, everything you create yeah. an individual you yes. create an individual story for each essentially, one. Essentially, essentially, <laughs> now I'm because the way the way I work, uh, um, I allow things to funnel themselves. I, I I seriously believe that that everything find its own its own place. If you if you drop something in the river, I I I'm I'm uh, I'm gonna say it. I'm a uh, a big follower of what Jesus used to talk about because mm -hmm. he always used to go to the fundamental basic things like rivers, trees, seeds, flowers, yes. something that I can relate to, you know? Yes. So if you drop something in the river or, or, or at the ocean, it will find its way where it's going and it will settle where it needs to be settled. I don't need yes. to push it so much. So yes. that's, that's for me, I'm seeing that even this podcast is part of the project it's it's integrated within that so how is going to evolve i have no idea you know but i allow it to to, to go that way mm -hmm. um excellent something that um just to, to to spin it a bit um i think we 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 said extensively on on, on the topics we've been talking so far um there's this at the moment the ai arts yeah, and with the AI arts, of course, this, it's another hot atomic potato, <laughs> you know, because there's a, it, 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 it touches so many things like intellectual property, the technicalities, um, past, present or future, how we're going to look at things and especially in, in, in arts, which for me art is not just the painting it's like if we if, for me if, if i look that's why i call it at the moment the ren ai sans it's like it's yeah. an it's another renaissance and when we change or when we iterate venture into a different way of communicating through arts music 
expression that starts seeping into the social structures. Like if you if you if you, if you look at the time of Leonardo da Vinci, the well, the last Renaissance that we call a Renaissance, it's like the the change was not just in the arts; it was in the social structures and the and how do how we build physical buildings, how we communicate with each other, the 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 way we thought about the world and ourselves expanded a bit more and went into you know so i be, i seriously believe that we're in that in, in 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 another again it's not new it's another version of the same thing yeah but from the law side um because there's a lot of things that 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 the unless you talk with a with a law guy you you, you cannot you can have an opinion about it, but you, you, you know I'm not gonna go in court and say my opinion is like and the, the judge will not, you know. So I'm from a, I, <laughs> it, that's the way it is. So from from a law side, when it comes to these, um, you know, you, you have this technical, uh, for instance, Van Gogh, or uh, or let's take like, let's take someone who's alive and he's who's prominent today, Beeple, you know. I can write prompts on the on, on my journey and stable diffusion, and I'm I'm and I'm I use a lot of the style of of people in my yes. in, in my things, not in the in the project, but in in other, in other pictures. Yes. Um, how does how does that in terms of law? Is there some common understanding? Is there or we're just it's a gray area and 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 because people are talking a bunch of things, and I seriously think that they they don't even know what they're talking about. Hmm. Most of the time, yeah. no, no, this is including is... myself, <laughs> including myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know? no, no, this is definitely a problem with all kinds of different dimensions. Uh -huh. it, is, it is difficult to talk generally about it because, uh, because the inherent characteristics of the technology challenge different aspects, especially of intellectual property. You know? I mean, of law in general, but since we're talking about art and art projects. Intellectual property is, of course, the field of law that comes instantly in mind, and, and fairly yeah. so, yeah. and fairly so. Um, I mean, to, to begin with, I would agree with you in that I would agree with your observation that we go through a period where we kind of redefine our relationship with with art. With art, and we redefine our relationship because I mean, for several reasons, both social and technological. Uh, the technological element, of course, here is that we are obtaining tools that are more capable, probably, than in the past. Yeah. Right. Uh, if if I were to make again a historical comparison, I would say that it is it's kind of a moment that that, that the people experienced when for photographic machines yeah. became cheap enough, yeah, so that people could take pictures around. Yeah. Why? Because up until that point, if you wanted to have a portrait, you had to hire a painter to yeah. paint it. Yeah. Right? Now you could create a, a fully realistic one just by clicking a button. Okay, photographic machines were not that impressive in the beginning, but they became abundant and they have yes. changed the rules. Has, has that uh, destroyed art? No. In essence, it didn't destroy art, it just gave it a different dimension. I mean, exactly. today we would all agree that photographers are artists. Yes. They can create all kinds of yeah. excellent visual results using a machine, which is a tool. Yes. Right? A photographic machine is a tool. Yeah. Now, I, I think that we are entering a similar space in the sense that AI is also a technological tool. Yeah. Right? With, with extremely interesting characteristics, but at the end of the day right now, it is used to serve human creativity. Right? The, it, as far as I know, it is still a human agent in control yes. who gives the prompts and the prompts, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean like the creates like the expectations. The last three days I've I've been crafting a prompt that took me what two days? All yes. sorts of research, Nassem Harame, uh, the, the space travel, the biological design and getting exactly. from here, from there, then the, exactly. it's it's not, I mean, okay, you can go on a journey and say, okay, I want yes. a picture of uh, Yanis flying on a super rocket with um, Elon Musk, you know? Yes. And it will start giving you iterations here and there until you find the right picture. But yes. there, there's so much more to that. Of course, of course. And exactly what you described is interesting for copyright law in particular. Exactly. exactly. Why? That's why I said it. <laughs> the process that you described, the fact that you spent two days 
in order to create a prompt. The fact that you have probably changed your mind several times in the process. Uh, At least a thousand times. <laughs> yes, yes. All this will qualify as creative choices. And that's exactly what copyright law protects. It protects creative choices. It does not protect the end result, which is, ah, which is whether okay. your work is whether your work is is artistically excellent or not. Copyright law does not care about. It. Yes. Yeah. Right? Copyright law cares, exactly. Copyright law cares about the fact that you have been through a process of making creative choices. Yes. If you do that, you are deemed worthy of protection. And but now, but now, all right, that 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 part, okay. That let's say uh, my process, yeah. But what about me venturing into other people's process and using that as part of my process? We will Where, come to that. Huh? We will come to that. Okay. That's, yes. that's that's <laughs> the, the the logical next question. Yeah. Look now what the interesting thing about copyright law is. I said that copyright law does not protect the end result in the sense that copyright law does not care about the artistic value of, the law. of the, oh yeah. copyright law is neutral, yeah. right? Judges are not art experts, which will tell you, ah, yeah, I find this AI painting to be worthy of protection because of its artistic value, whereby yeah. this one, I don't like it so much, so we will not protect it. At the same time, at the same time, in law, we usually say that copyright protects the expression of an idea. The All expression. Right. Yes. It means that copyright protection attaches itself, attaches itself on the way that you have expressed your idea. But your idea in principle is free for the others to get inspired by. Ah, it. yes. All right. Which means which means, uh, Kevin, that if a fellow artist shares his own process of creating with you, this part is free. Yes. What you are not allowed to do, what you are not allowed to do, is to do an exact copy, copy of it of their final work of the You're expression not to do, of the expression. Of the expression. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because I always, I always, I always venture in my mind, and I like, okay, where is my my idea coming from? And my ideas for me when I when I contemplate, I do a little meditation, and you know how yes. I. Uh, usually it's like okay, so I have this idea. Yes, illa man, you know it's like yesterday I was there. I had I had a conversation with Yanis. Then I met Ferris. Then I met that guy. Then on the street there was there was the full moon, and it's like and I and I see the expression of that idea, and it's like and I can see all of that. So how can I say how can I put a copyright? on that idea when the process of that idea itself is linked to so many things indeed and exactly this is why we do uh, not yeah. protect ideas uh, in because fact, you can't <laughs> i mean in fact it would be dangerous it, yes if, yes if we were to limit to put limits Comple to ideas completely then we would completely destroy destroy it, the yeah. human thought process exactly it's yes. impossible and, yes. and copyright law does not do that for sure fantastic we, we in fact copyright law is aware of that yeah this is what we call sometimes in law it is the standing of the soldiers of giants effect that that we are fully aware that nothing is created out of thin air everything everything is created through social interaction and through sharing ideas look i have to admit not all of us have the same impression there are there are companies which yeah. i don't want to name because i don't want to be accused of being biased or promoting certain corporate interests but i can tell you that there are companies that unfortunately are systematically trying to monopolize ideas yeah. we must we must always be careful copyright is a market monopoly yeah the yeah. very essence of copyright is to give the artist a monopoly a market monopoly yeah. over that's the world. purpose right that is the main purpose that's to the main keep purpose. a market monopoly right yeah. because the law is aware that artistic expression at the end of the day produces economic assets and, and, and the creator gets a monopoly yeah. over the exploitation of that asset. Of, the, of that asset. Yeah. Right? Which is fair enough, because that gives them incentive to, to move forward, right? But, again, the, the ultimate limit of copyright law is to leave ideas free. Why? Because at the end of the day, 
ideas are our common heritage. Uh, to, to give you an example, how many of our movies or our paintings or our songs are inspired by classic fairy tale stories or, or by classic works of literature art like the works of Shakespeare or in order to bless a little bit my country of origin, which is Greece, the, the plays of ancient drama from Greece. Yes. And, yes. and in a way, in a way, we have noticed that, that it is fundamentally a good thing. I mean, yes. you mentioned earlier the Renaissance. Yeah. Uh, well, the Renaissance would have never happened if the ideas of Greek Roman antiquity were not for free. Exactly. Imagine, yes, imagine yeah, if yeah. somebody if somebody would claim copyright over the idea of democracy. Yeah. <laughs> but what would be the end result of that? Probably probably a very bad society. Right? A, yes. Uh, like... So so ideas are for free. And and you can be inspired <laughs> in your prompts, Kevin. I, I can give you my legal opinion on that. You can be inspired by anything. Yeah. Inspiration is for free. Yeah. Ideas are for free. That's the key message. The yeah. only thing you're not allowed to do is to interfere with somebody else's final product because that is their economic asset. Exactly. And that would be unfair. And there are, there are several ways to, to, to do that, right? It's not only by making a copy. It's also by misrepresenting it as being yours. Exactly. Or, yes, 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 yes. You know, there are all kinds of ways. Yes, no, these are yes. the things that copyright prohibits. Yeah. But yeah. what copyright certainly leaves for free is is the idea behind the yeah. work. And the, the fact that AI-based tools, right, allow people to take a different kind of creative choices, that means that copyright will be there to welcome it and protect it. Yes. Uh, I mean, I mean, when I say different kind of creative choices, when you have in front of you a, a canvas and a palette of colors, in order to create a work, you need to make certain creative choices. In a way, your creative choices are dictated by the technology you are using. You're using as much as you can do. Yes. By the same token, AI-based uh, art comes from a tool that also allows for creative choices. Yeah. It's just creative choices of a different kind. Yes. Yeah. Maybe it has become a little bit more abstract because people might think, okay, uh, if, if Kevin, for example, gives a prompt to a computer program based on AI, but then the program does the work. Well, you might say that the, the program does the hard labor. The execution. Time, but you give... You, you give, give the direction. You give the... Direction. the, the yes. You, you give, give the, the idea. The you make the creative choices. Yes. Yes. Right? Yes. yes. For sure. Now, now you might you might ask me and and Ioannis, what about AI systems that might be able to produce works on their own without receiving any input from human agents? Yes. Right? Let us let us talk about science fiction a bit. Yes, yeah, yeah, let yeah. us let us let yeah. our mind let's, roam freely. Let's, let's rock and roll. <laughs> right? What about that? What about such uh, AI agents? First and foremost, interesting. Interesting. If if, 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 if if humanity comes to the point where we can design such tools, it means that we have come a long way. We have come a long way. <laughs> now, in this case, who will get copyright protection? Yeah. Can we recognize copyright protection uh, for an AI agent? So we say that the AI agent is the copyright holder. Yeah. In order to answer this question, I think we should do uh, we, we shall follow the method that we have established in the introduction of this podcast. We need to go back to fundamentals yeah. and we need to ask ourselves, why do we award copyright protection to human agents? Why exactly. have we invented Invented. What was the need for it? Exactly. Uh, the need for that is to allow human agents that are creative to make a living out of it. Yeah. Allow them, so to speak, to use their art yeah. as an economic asset that will allow them to fund their most basic needs. Needs, yeah. Right, the, the, their electricity bill, their yeah. internet bill, yes. right? The, their meals and everything. Question, question, do AI agents have need. similar needs? Do, do, they need, do they need a house? Do they need to pay for internet? Yeah. As far as I know, they don't. And, and I think that I think that that, that, that starts put, putting a limit now on, yeah. on what we can and what we cannot recognize yes. in, in this case and in these systems. Uh, I would say I would say that in, in this case, copyright protection would be unnecessary yeah. because it fails to observe 
societal needs. Yeah. There is no interest here to protect. Of course, yeah. one might tell me that I'm unfair towards AI agents. They, unless, they, unless we get to a point where AI yeah. agents are conscious like us and they will need to pay their rent and they will need... Depends though, because, you know, why, why do we need a rent? It's because we have physical bodies that have all kinds of needs. They don't, they will not, you know? At the end of the day, AI is primarily software. But let's and, and let's let's, let's okay. doesn't feel hungry, right? Let's let's, let's go. I, mean, I, I like I like the premise of software that is able to dream. Yeah. But I I, I fail to see how software will feel hungry or wh whether it will. But you let's know. let's 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 go a bit down the rabbit hole, <laughs> which yes. which I like it. <laughs> yes. But let's say let's 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 picture a scenario where you have a uh, an agent moving agent like a, a a cyborg if you wish you know yes. with the software and it's and and it and it became conscious and this 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 cyborg needs to charge needs to get shelter because if there's a, a tornado or something is going to be destroyed you know and and, yes. and erosion over time is going to take yes. take toll you know so in that case this yeah. this cyborg artificial intelligence whatever you want to call it it has some sort of basic needs as well yeah, I understand that. I understand that, Kevin. But uh, I, I need I need to, to stress something here. Yeah. Uh, which which makes it difficult, and this is why, as a legal academic, I am not so prone to enter uh, such discussions. Although I can confirm that there are lots of them, yeah. including people from my own discipline. The thing is that the scenario that you described uh, takes us granted several things that are not for example do we know what consciousness is do we know what intelligence is that, that's the reality why, that's why i love going down the rabbit holes because there, there is another rabbit hole waiting in it yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. and the reality is that we don't we don't man yeah. we don't in yeah. essence I, I can tell you a secret that yeah. most people might have not realized yeah the law does not have a definition of what is a human it is impossible to do that. I can, we, yeah, yeah, but I, I can understand. And look, that. Look, yes. look why this is important. Yes. For our entire legal system, yeah. our entire legal system is based on the premise that only human agents, only human agents are supposed to be entitled to rights and only human agents, agents are able to undertake obligations. Which, of course, makes a huge difference, right? Of course. It, it, it is the primordial question that defines yeah. and answers whether whether you will obtain a right or, no, or not. Get an yeah. The funny thing is that we don't know what a human is. We don't. <laughs> and, 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 you know, it, it's funny because we kind of take it for granted. We, yes, we can define yes, a yes. human agent by a certain functional characteristics. Yes. But in reality, we don't really know what yeah. it is yeah we don't yeah. And, yeah. and you know uh this is why i find it difficult to to say whether such agents uh will ever emerge and whether they will be in need of rights and of obligations right. yeah, 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 yeah. I, mean, I mean to begin with to begin with and, and and this is this is this is something all humans do we have a tendency to anthropomorphize everything yeah. we kind of we kind of think that everything will think like us or everything will have the same conceptions as we do. I think we project, we about, project, we project that even onto God, man. You know, it's like that exactly. that, 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 like, that he's gonna punish like, us, and it's like because that's what we do. Exactly. <laughs> but, Master, but that we are masters of projections. Indeed, <laughs> yes. but that will not necessarily play out this way. No, and, of course. Yeah. And, and you know. Since we are talking a bit about science fiction, yeah, I, I don't know whether the viewers have watched the movie Prometheus, which I mentioned in in the beginning of the movie. Yeah. But the movie Prometheus includes a cyborg, a yes. very advanced robot, David. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Played excellently by Fassbender, by the way. Yeah, Fassbender was fantastic. Yeah, playing David, uh, and and this movie makes a negative prediction about these agents. Uh, David is absolutely able to imitate the spectrum of human behavior yeah but the movie proves that in reality in reality he thinks completely differently than yeah. us yeah. yeah yeah he can imitate compassion for example yes 
but he is not really so incompatible. He just yes. using it as a tool for his own oh, no. ultimate yes. purposes. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Yes. So, what if these agents develop that way? I'm not saying necessarily that we need to kill them. Don't get me wrong. No, no, no. But I'm saying that uh, the way we decide to award rights and obligations is obligations is based on very certain human patterns yeah and human patterns that we don't even understand ourselves yeah. but we take them for granted yeah right talking about we don't know how the combined internal combustion engine works right yeah, exactly we don't, yeah, even, yeah, 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 yeah. don't even know how yeah. our internal yes. combustion engine yes, works. yes 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, so so I, i would be a little bit careful i think i think that the only answer that i can give you as a legal academic would be that for me to give you an informed opinion on that i will have to experiment with such things with such i will have to course. monitor them yeah. for a rather long period of time yes. Yes. before i'm able to tell you whether we are supposed to give them any kind of rights or obligations that exactly. are similar to that of human agents yeah right and this is why i also caution my students to be careful in these discussions because regulation comes with a lot of responsibility of course is I mean, I said, of course, that our discipline is easier than astrophysics, and objectively it is. But at the same time, the complication of my discipline is that we are asked to make decisions about how to better balance rights and interests. Yeah. And then that is not an easy task. It's not an easy task. I mean, I mean the, the law's ultimate purpose is to keep everybody happy. Yeah. And and we need to be a little bit more thankful to our laws right yeah. I, i know that people usually when they think of laws they think about fines and they have to pay something or whatever yes, but yes. in essence but yeah. in essence our laws have achieved yes. socially something impressive yeah they have achieved that we live in peace yeah without having any major incidents yeah. of causing harm to one another yeah. and that is not an easy task why because you know how human beings are for human beings to avoid harming one another they must be happy enough yeah. and to keep human beings happy that's a difficult task it's a difficult task it's, it's that's, that's a difficult task and that's that's what we are listening to let's call it astronomical yes <laughs> it's an astronomical yes. task indeed, indeed. <laughs> but that is that is the way i see the beauty of my science yes it is yes. it is the beauty and the challenge that i'm happy yes, to sure. overtake every single day sure. right I mean yeah I mean I'm really grateful man because um yes Yeah I really contemplate when 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 speaking with you it's like first of all you broke uh uh a mental projection that I had of what is law because I was one of those like when when law law uh, is like put things in place and it's like if you if you cross from here to here you're gonna be fined and if you cross from here to here you're gonna be in jail and you're gonna, you're gonna yes. be like this and it's like punishment you know yes. um which which to a certain extent is there and uh, and sometimes that's where i see that the application of it sometimes is misused or not used responsibly or abused whatever oh. but again we're humans and and we yeah. we we make mistakes and we're selfish yeah. and 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 there's a drive for you know and that's that's automatically then I, no give me the right look the law is another tool Uh, you exa- like everything is you know it's like but then i like like for instance when when even in the bible you know it's like when when they were when moses it what well, moses brought law and order because until then they were fornicating with each other's mothers it's like there it's, it was like complete chaos you know yes. and and out of that there's there's all sorts of incidents and diseases and and it's 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 madness Yes. You know? so there yes. there needs to be some 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 sort of law yes. and and order and regulations indeed. indeed you know we have a similar story in greece yes yeah i mean the bible is is replicated and uh, no no i mean i'm just inspired by this example uh you know um you must have heard of this ancient philosopher socrates right of course of course, of course. and in one of the many discussions that he was having with one of his contemporary colleagues other philosophers they they kind of agreed that uh uh that that human societies became tenable and possible the moment that human that humans inherited from gods two characteristics which is shame and judgment yes judgment not in the negative sense that you judge others but no. but you are in a position to make rational decisions yeah 
Entire. Right? They, they, they agreed that this was a basic precondition for yeah. a functional society. Yeah. So, i- indeed, and uh, the reason I like technology law is exactly because, because by definition, it pushes the boundaries of my discipline. Yes. Uh, and why I say it pushes the boundaries. Our laws, our current laws were designed uh, in previous centuries. They yeah. represent mostly societies that are, were structured around industrial goods. Yes. Right. We, we still have industrial goods, but we are, we are now becoming predominantly digital. Yes. And that comes with different characteristics. This is why this field pushes the limits yes. of existing laws. But by doing so, by doing so, it, it, it forces us to go back to our origins because, because there is a certain reason why we have decided at a certain point to regulate something the one or the other way. I'm not saying that all the decisions that we have made in the past were rational, no. no. I can tell you that there are examples of bad regulation whereby states were shamelessly defending the interests of a very particular social group uh, to the detriment of all others. Yes. But such examples aside, uh, to question why we have decided to regulate things the way we have done, it is, I think, the best compass in order to address new technological situations, because it allows us to view law as as, so to speak, a timeless instrument, which, as I said in the beginning of our discussion, represents the average common sense. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, we're we're venturing into the the ending now. Um, It's past one hour. Um, But isn't gravity a law? So so law law is, I mean, but there's, 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 Without law, there's just chaos, man. It's like let's let's not say let let us say it's not law. It's org or brings organization, order. order, order, and order has to have some sort of, of law. Order. Like, you know, it's and, like... and and I would agree that order might sometimes exist without law. I, I understand yes, that. Yes, yes, right? yes. There's a natural sometimes. order, but when 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 you introduce a species like us, which we are purely chaotic left without without that's that's the way i see it like for instance i would i i like to uh, we're in malta yeah yes. <laughs> and something that struck me a lot because i've traveled a lot with plane and i've been to ecuador to deserts everywhere but then when i was traveling with my camper van from portugal to netherlands you feel the difference the, the the Portugal compared to, to, to Netherlands is yes. pure chaos. Yes. Ups, downs, forests, hills, even politically. Because yes. it reflects what's what's on the land. You go yes. into Netherlands, the moment you go into the Netherlands, my mind, which I have a chaotic mind, yeah, it found order immediately. It fell into place. It's flat. People always know what they want. They're, 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 they're very upfront not loud you know i'm not saying one is better than the other one for fuck's sake yeah you know it's just a a a, a, a representation yes yes no it indeed it shows that order comes in different shapes yes 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 yes. and 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 even for with 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 that note i think even the regulations when we speak about regulations on the blockchain on uh, on ai arts on uh, on crypto on tokens on projects it's like even there, it's like it has different shapes and different forms and different a- applications. But none, absolutely. But nonetheless, nonetheless, I think that there should be some sort of regulation. Yes. Or yes. else, and, or else would be like back into the fucking cowboys and Indians, or or uh, you know, it's like oh, if if there's no regulation, what and 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 maybe my moral compass leans more into being selfish and and stepping in onto others yes. which is understandable all right yes. that's what i'm going to do but if there yes. is regulation there is it's creating a bit of a threshold between me and yes. you you know yes, and we, we can come into a mutual understanding how and, to coexist and, and, and no matter whether we want to accept it or not uh, what i have learned uh, by being involved in law for almost 20 years now yeah since the beginning of my studies, 
which, which by the way reveals how old i am right i'm an old man <laughs> uh, the, whether we want to admit it or not whether we want to accept it or not in order to be able to coexist in a society we have to accept that we will impose certain limits on ourselves you have to learn uh, uh, you know i sometimes i find it difficult to explain to people that the fact that you have a right is not a green card in order to do all kinds of arbitrary oh, and random stuff. No, it's the other way around. Right? <laughs> it, is, it is a very carefully yes. carved out power that you have. Definitely. Right? Which we have decided that still allows for a proper balance. But yes. to be in a society means that we are supposed to self-limit, to, to, to put limits on ourselves yes. first. Yes. And then, of course, if yes. we don't, society will make sure yes. that things will be back into an equilibrium. I think that sometimes digital societies, like those created in the blockchain, have a tendency to misinterpret this function. They, they talk about uh, absolute freedom or whatever, but, but, but there is no such thing as absolute freedom. No. Uh, absolute freedom, uh, the, way, the way I see it, or the way I understand it, the way they present it, is, is probably a, a license to arbitrarily uh, exploit others. Yes, the, the fuck especially you in blockchain, <laughs> like... especially, especially in blockchain, because it is a technology that is stably connected to capital right now. Yeah. The major applications of, 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 of blockchain are monetary, they have to do with capital. I, I think we need to be afraid because this movement of blockchain self-regulation without any institutional intervention, I'm afraid that it is extreme capitalist propaganda in order to take out in order to take out checks and balances that have been tested for centuries yeah. to be absolutely necessary for a functional society yes and 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 these tendencies do not only affect the economic space unfortunately they migrate to the very basics of our democracy yeah and we have to be very careful when we when we easily support such ideas because because the line between what people perceive as freedom and dictatorship of the few is very thin and blurry and it, <laughs> and it can't be crossed very easily yes 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 right. i think i will stop here kevin because i already uh, kind of exploited your kindness as a host and I no, talk- man, it's like uh, I could uh, I could go for up, up till this evening, man, but even the viewers then after an hour, you know, it, it, it gets and and yes. I'd like to leave them with with we, we touched very, very deep subjects and and then yes. I think in a very easy, informative way, which would hopefully. Which, yeah, I mean, but so let's let's um, uh, capitalize on 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 that. Excellent. So, Thank you so much, man. I really, I really thank you so much. You made my day that you spoke in, 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 in uh, about my project, man. Um, no, yeah. no, no. I can only encourage you to carry on. I will uh, carry on, really, bro. Really, really, yeah. really. Thank you for the kind invitation. It was a great pleasure. Thank you so much, man. So until the next one. Until the next one. Enjoy the rest of the day. Much love, you bro. Too, Cheers. Ciao, ciao.